Welcome back to the history of the most important family in the world. Of course, we all are from Adam. We're all one race, the human race. Science declared in the early 2000s, and the Bible has declared since it's revealing from the Holy Spirit. But we are at a very specific family. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the way to David, all the way to Messiah. And you'll remember, lastly, we were burying Isaac. He, he was 180 years. He breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people. An old man of ripe age, full of days, satisfied with days. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Then you'll remember we just covered Esau's genealogy. Now. We're in the line of the Messiah, Joseph's. Now, well, Jacob and his son Joseph and onward. Now Jacob lived in the land where his father had sojourned, in the land of Canaan. These are the records of the generations of Jacob, Joseph. When 17 years of age was pasturing the flock with his brothers, while he was still a youth, along with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives and Joseph brought back a bad report about them to their father now Israel Jacob now Jacob who God renamed Israel loved Joseph more than all his sons because he was the son of his old age and he made him a very colored tunic or a coat of multi colors a full-length robe his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, and so they hated him, and they could not speak to him on friendly terms. Then Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Please listen to this dream which I have had. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf rose up and also stood erect. And behold, your sheaves gathered round and bowed down to my sheaf. Then his brothers said to him, Are you actually going to reign over us? Or are you really going to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Now, he had still another dream and related it to his brothers and said, Lo, I have had still another dream, and behold, the sun and the moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. He related it to his father and to his brothers, and, to his, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have had? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come to bow ourselves down before you to the ground? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the saying in his mind. Then his brothers went to pasture their flock in Shechem. Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send you to them. And he said, I will go. Literally, behold me, here I am. In the King James, I believe. Then he said to him, Go now and see about the welfare of your brothers and the welfare of the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. A man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field, and the man asked, What are you looking for? He said, I am looking for my brothers. Please tell me where they are pasturing the flock. Then the man said, they have moved from here. For I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. When they saw him from a distance, and before he came close to them, they plotted against him to put him to death. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Now then, come, 
Let us kill him and throw him down in one of the pits and we will say, A wild beast devoured him. <laughs> then let us see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard this and rescued him out of their hands and said, Let us not take his life. Reuben further said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit that is in the wilderness, but do not lay your hands on him that he might... Well, he said this, that he might rescue him out of their hands to restore him to his father. So it came about when Joseph reached his brothers that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the very colored tunic that was on him, and they took him and threw him in the pit. Now the pit was empty without any water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal and they raised their eyes and looked and behold a caravan of Ishmaelites was coming from Gilead and their camels bearing ar aromatic gum and balm and myrrh on their way to bring them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers hmm, what profited us to kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come let us sell him to the Ishmaelites not lay our hands on him for he is our brother of our own flesh and his brothers listened to him then some Midianite traders passed by so they pulled up and lifted Joseph pulled him up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver thus they brought Joseph into Egypt God's will now Reuben returned to the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, so he tore his garments. He returned to his rose and said, The boy is not there! As for me, wh what shall I do? Where am I to go, he said. So they took Joseph's tunic and slaughtered a male goat and dipped the tunic in the blood. And they sent the very colored tunic and brought it to their father. And they lied. They said, We found this. Please examine it to see whether it, it is your son's tunic or nay. Then he examined it. It is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces! So Jacob tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. Then all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, Surely I will go down to Sheol and mourning for my son. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, Pharaoh's officer, Potiphar, the captain of the bodyguard. Now, such a horrible thing. And they took the jacket and covered him in blood, disrespect for the father, hatred, jealousy, wickedness but God meant it for good though they meant it for evil God is sovereign